okay, so I guess uh, the talk just started, right? Uh, my name is Anna Hurst. Uh, I'm a software developer. I've been developing software for like 20 years. Um, and as I've grown older as a software developer, uh, I guess you could say that I've been uh, increasingly preoccupied with the basics and the fundamentals. Uh, so today I'd like to take uh, the opportunity to talk about string, the string data type. Um, but okay, this was supposed to work, and it didn't. No. Ah, I didn't plug it in. That was the superimposed USB thing. You had to try it at least three times. Um, now I can click. OK, so static typing. Uh, who here programs in a programming language like, uh, let's say, F sharp? OK, a couple. C sharp. A lot more. Um, uh, dynamically typed programming language. Oh, well, a couple. Um, what's the purpose of these types? Why do we have this uh, type system in place? Why is why we if we believe in sort of static type checking, why is that? And sort of one perspective of that is that um, uh, it helps us answer this this question here. So sort of like in the vast ocean of possible types, which ones should be allowed to go where? And ideally, the type system will help you in the way that it. It's going to accept all possible valid values, the values that you want to have in your program. And then it's going to reject all the other ones, all the invalid values. So we don't want any of those. Uh, so, so in that perspective, how do you feel about this type? This is object in .NET, right? So it accepts all values, right? Uh, and it, it achieves that goal by rejecting none. So you can put even sort of your value types you can put in in a, as an object if you just put it in the box. OK, so it accepts the valid values. There's no attempt of rejecting invalid values. So not terribly helpful uh, in sort of achieving these goals uh, of having exactly the values you want in your program. What about string? How do you feel about string? When, well, certainly, uh, that's, a, that's a subset, right? It's a smaller set of values. But of course, you can do this. You can project any object you have into sort of the sp string domain. So you're, so you're back where you started. So it achieves the same goals as object. You can accept any valued value, but it rejects none. And in a sense, then string is just object in disguise, right? So it feels a little bit better to type it as string, uh, but it doesn't really do much uh, more than object does. And that's why pe some people like to talk about stringly typed programs, right? So you, ideally, you want strongly typed, but if you have strings everywhere, well, not, not much is really going on. So I tried to come up with some useful imagery, uh, and I, I sometimes think about uh, like this uh, submarine, where you sort of you put a value into the submarine, and then it sort of, sort of submerses into the sea of string, and you can't see it. And then at some point later, it's going to sort of emerge again, and hopefully it's, uh, uh, nothing too bad will have happened in the meantime. But okay, let's, let's look at some actual strings. Uh, here's a, a very famous one. This is one of the sort of plain text regular strings that, we that we're familiar with. Uh, this is another one. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember what it says. I, I don't think it's something rude, but it's a, at least it's a string. Um, here's another one. This has some more structure to it. Uh, it Sort of um, can be interpreted to be an URL. This is another one with some structure. Here's a famous one that you may have seen. Uh, this is a slightly longer one. And this is the last one I'm going to show you. Um, when we type something as string, we're saying sort of we're opening our arms and saying, welcome to all these different kinds of strings that I just showed you. Um, and a lot more, obviously, right? Um, uh, all of them. Um, but of course, when we, when we do apply this type of string, we never mean for all those to enter our program, right? We mean something else. Um, we mean something more like this. It's going to be a string, but there are some sort of some assumptions attached to that string. 
Now, the interesting question then is, what are those assumptions? Those assumptions that the type system knows nothing about and has no way of sort of enforcing for you. Um, well, obviously, it has something to do with the content of the string, right? So you're gonna, uh, that's, that's, that's all it can be about, in a sense. It could be about uh, assuming that the content is going to have some sort of structure, like a URL structure, or a JSON structure, or a YAML structure, if you can call that structure. Um, it might be that we have some expectations about, from all the possible characters that you could uh, represent in a Unicode string, only some of them are actually going to occur. Maybe we're not sort of e expecting angle brackets, something like that. Um, and it could be that we, or usually, we have some notion of, okay, how long is this string going to be? Right? Uh, it's going to be not too short and not too long, and sort of like just right, uh, like the kind of Goldilocks length to the string. Um, and these assumptions, I think, are very important because these are what uh, help us answer this question, is this string valid, right? So in a sense, you have this vast set, uh, almost infinite set of strings, really. Uh, it's just, uh, well, there are some limites, uh, limitations in the .NET runtime, but, but for all practical purposes, it can be as long as you want it to be. Um, and really, just a very tiny subset of that set are going to be those valid strings that we think about when we sort of label it as string. Now, an interesting question then is, do we have some sort of specification to let us distinguish between those two kinds of things? Because if we don't, then that sort of, that boundary weakens and we don't really know where it is. And it sort of opens up for this uh, set of strings that also exist they are kind of malicious and you don't definitely don't want in your program. They're sort of specially designed to mess with your program. And in general, um, we're now in this sort of interesting situation where we, we care deeply about whether or not a string is valid, uh, but we might not have a well-defined check to say, uh, yeah, it's valid or no, it's not. Um, so we have these sort of unarticulated tacit assumptions uh, and, and those tend to be bad for software. Those tends to be sort of where surprises can hide. And what's perhaps even worse is that they're sort of volatile, right? What I mean by that is they, they can change over time. And if they do change, we don't really know about it. Because we haven't articulated the assumptions in the first place, they can change over time. This is very, very bad for software. It's sort of counter to, to the predictability that we tend to like. But it gets even more interesting when you start working with these strings, right? We, we, we do this process called string manipulation, where we maybe we substitute some part of the string, or you put it together with another string, or replace something, or uh, truncate it, or something like that. And what's interesting, to me at least, is uh, string values tend to live this sort of double life. And what I mean by that is that you have this sort of string domain where your actual string lives, but you also have this sort of realm or this plane of existence with, uh, with these, uh, this assumed structure. So you have this string, and you're assuming that it has some sort of structure, and then you do your manipulation to get another string, and you hope to do that in a way that preserves the same assumed structure. That's a lot of hoping. Um, so you're in sort of a situation like this. So if you have a string that's supposed to be a URL that might contain a URL, probably has a URL, right? Maybe we checked it, maybe we didn't. And then we do some manipulation, and we end up with another, uh, with another string. With these sort of low-level concatenations, I'm going to replace it a little bit, maybe something between these uh, uh, slashes or something like that. And then hopefully, we still have a URL when we're done. OK. So, so far in this talk, all I've done is complain. Um, <laughs> what can we do about this? Well, first, we can be aware that this is the sort of the state of affairs. And then we can start to try to articulate these challenges that we're facing, put it into words. And we can also start to try to articulate these sort of assumptions that we have and put them in different categories. We can try to distinguish between different kinds of st uh, strings because we use strings to, to mean different things. 
And uh, there's a guy called Hillel Wayne who distinguishes between four different kinds of strings, and I think that's a very useful place to start. So you have your, your, sort of your regular plain text, which is sort of the hello world and your description of some item kind of uh, text, but also the thing that sort of contains all the works of Shakespeare and so on and so forth, sort of the free form text, right? That could be in different <laughs> languages and, and all those kinds of things. Um, very few uh, restrictions to that kind of text. Then you have symbols, which are your, like your GUIDs or your customer IDs or uh, something like that. Um, it might be a, a specification. You might be able to write a regular expression, something like that, to validate that it sort of actually has, has that structure. And then you have data. That's going to be your, your JSON or your YAML or your XML or something like that. And finally, you have code. Um, and code is, well, intended to be interpreted by, by some other program, like an interpreter or a compiler or something like that. For both data and code, um, you might be lucky and there might be a specification, or at least a, sort of a um, canonical implementation or something like that that sort of access that specification. Uh, to the extent that we have specifications, that we have explicit constraints that we could enforce, we should enforce them. We might consider inventing constraints when there are no obvious ones. You might say, I'm not sure how, this, how long this string is going to be, but it's not going to be infinitely long. I might say, I'm going to cap it at 1,000 characters or 100 characters. It's going to depend, depend on your domain. Uh, you might consider establishing some trust boundaries. Right? And you're going to have to presumably talk string at the edges of your system. Like when you talk to another system or some other system talks to you, you're going to have to accept these uh, strings. Um, but then you can sort of enforce your assumptions on the inside of your system. You can start by tagging your strings. And you can use the type system for that. You can do something like this. Here's a customer number. I'm not going to do much with it. I'm just going to put it inside a class. I'm going to say, OK, my customer number lives here now. So that has a couple of benefits. Well, it sort of communicates intent, right? And it also says that um, you're not really free to do this uh, concatenation, truncation, uh, substitution uh, directly to this value. So if you do that, you're going to sort of have to do that in a very structured way. Uh, and of course, if you have some, some specification, you can add some validation to it. So you might not even be able to create that value unless it's actually following your specification. So in a sense, you're turning it around from this sort of, maybe I have some structure in my string, to I have some structure and there's going to be a string inside it, uh, and I might uh, apply some validation to that. So we turned it outside in. Now I have my URL. There's, there's going to be a string inside there, right? There's no going away from that. Um, but then you can sort of be more explicit about it, and your program is going to be clearer. It's a good idea to manipulate at the level of that structure. Right, so you, uh, if you're going to manipulate URL, you get to talk in terms of URLs, not in terms of substitute this or concatenate with that. Uh, of course, you should be really, really, really careful when mixing different string types. And I'm talking explicitly now about taking one of these free form text things and putting inside something that's going to be interpreted by, by a computer. Right? So if you're mixing free form plain text with code, that's how sort of injection attacks happen, right? And finally, just to never trust a string. Thanks. <laughs>